All right, everybody, we are live again. Dynasty Mirror Search for Uhuru. I am back from uh, Nigeria. I also went to Benin and Togo. The This was the best trip to Africa I've ever had. Uh, got, a lot, got a lot accomplished and uh, probably covered that in another video. We also talk about that in this video because pretty much, I mean, I accomplished pretty much what the title of the video says as far as repatriation and uh all that good stuff so yeah we'll, we'll definitely touch on it uh some of this video too but uh, i have my brother bomani tahimba on with us and today's to tonight's topic is repatriation and pan-africanism and the pan-africanism connection to the 2019 year of return with Bom bomani tahimba now let's jump right into it year of return ghana repatriation Bomani, this term repatriation, what exactly does it mean? Yes, perfect. You know, I, I, I kind of got my own definition for many things. But yeah, let me share with people what the um, exact definition is of repatriation or repatriation, whichever way people want to pronounce it. Now, um, uh, people like myself born in Jamaica, you know, we consider ourselves stolen Africans or, you know, or you know, African Jamaicans or, you know, or, you know, or, or Af you know, or, uh, uh, Africans uh, born in Jamaica. Right. Uh, as far as uh, repatriation for us and for also our brothers and sisters, you know, well, since I live in America, the Africans are uh, born in America or African Americans. Um, it's, it's stolen Africans. Uh, we are basically uh, returning to the land of our ancestors after being stolen, returning after many, many generations. And repatriation movement is part of us connecting together as a people and building ways to where we can integrate back into the African society and also contribute our skills and whatever resources we've been able to gain uh, toward nation building. It's not about being upset about, uh, you know, uh, some of our, you know, brothers and sisters participating uh, in, the, in the in the slave trade. It's not about uh, us pointing fingers or blaming. It's about this, the, the reconnection for us to build. You know, it's um, it goes beyond this, you know, reparations. Uh, you know, it's you know, and goes beyond this. It goes to the physical aspects of, of the process of repairing, because when you're reconnecting, you're reintegrating yourself back into the culture to where you're learning um, what you have missed, but also there's things that you have learned that you can contribute. So it's that full process. Okay. Now, Bamani, so when I first started going to Africa and, you know, everybody was talking about repatriation, repatriation, and then I started asking questions like, are making statements like, oh, well, since you repatriated to either Senegal or Ghana or whatnot, that's great because now you have an ECOWAS passport. And then people will reply back, well, you know, I haven't gotten my passport yet. I haven't gotten my citizenship. Can you truly repatriate to a country and not be considered a citizen? Absolutely. Um, you know, People and their, you know, their, you know, their government paperwork and stuff like that. You know, when we were stolen Africans, uh, you know, we didn't have all these paperwork and all these other things. You know, so us returning, you know, we didn't, you know, we, us returning, you know, we need a visa, we need this and that, you know, modern day stuff. Uh, but, you know, we, we literally, you know, that, that process is you living and doing business and contributing your energy you know, to the purpose of, uh, you know, Pan-Africanism, you know, that's uh, that process of, you know, repatriation going together with Pan-Africanism. Okay. And okay. hopefully I answer the question, if I'm not, if I didn't, I'll just reiterate it. <laughs> uh, it's just, that, that, that's what kind of, when I started to get confused in regards to repatriation, because my thing is, if you relocate to a country and you're not fully accepted, via paperwork and legislation well not, not legislation but via paperwork whether it be a pass passport or citizenship you know and then just the whole process of being considered or you know having access access to perks of being a citizen why would one want to i guess up and relocate to another country if you're gonna have a lot of red tape when it comes to being fully recognized by a government as African. Yeah, the, the, the hell with these African governments are. Uh, you know, it, it's like, not, you know, it, it's, it's not about 
them and their paperwork. It's about us reconnecting to our land, our ancestral land, doing what we need to do. Yes, so we, you know, we're gonna have to work it out to get citizenship and things like that. And in Ghana, you know, some people have been here 20, 30 years and they don't have citizenship. Uh, no, but the thing of it is, it's a process that, uh, you know, you see that the Ghanaian government is making a certain process, but um, I can't use their, you know, their finalization of whatever they're gonna eventually or may not give me. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, approval of our reconnection uh, because what we're doing uh, you know, and regardless uh, once we'll get there and we, we're more organized um, citizenship will be in you know, a simple example once we build Garvey town um, mm -hmm. you know all of us will be granted citizenship you know it'll be it's a simple thing you know we did the work we made certain moves and we can work that out but sometimes it's hard to bargain you know and then we don't have so much on the table uh, to you know, to bargain with. Actually, re repeat, repeat, repeat that again. So, do you think part of the reason why um, it's been so hard for a lot of repatriates to get citizenship in Ghana is because they're not coming together as one? Because I know you got the African American Ghana Association, right? Is that what it's called, the AAGA? Am I correct? Yes, uh, the two organization uh, which represent uh, the majority of people who are, uh, who are repatriated is uh, the African American Association of Ghana um, mm -hmm. and the uh, Caribbean Association of Ghana, uh, for those who were born in different Caribbean islands. Um, and both organizations have been to my uh, repatriation and investment conference and I've, you know, I know a lot of the members and we still connect. Um, the, the, the biggest issue that I see, and that's why it was important for us to connect and, you know, and, and really elevate our uh, Garvey town is because we have several thousand Africans uh, that's born in the diaspora all over Ghana. Mm -hmm. The issue is the, you know, a lot of people doing great things but the issue is just the collective uh, impact, uh, which is what changes, you know, getting citizenship and things like that. So obviously it was a wonderful impact, but in order to get, you know, gain ground and open things up, you know, uh, and I'm not saying that we're, we're begging for certain things, but we also have to understand that we're dealing with a, a country or most of African countries, you know, unemployment rate from any, anywhere to over 50, you know, over 50%. Yeah. Here, here and there. Uh, so, Basically, in that situation, uh, most governments, you know, if, you know, feel like they have a lot of their own problems to deal with. But the fact that you know Ghana is making certain provision, you know, we have to give them uh, credit. But at the same time, too, uh, in order for things to move, you know, the momentum has to be there. Uh, so, and that's what me and uh, Sister Imakus always talk about: the things that we have to do to make the change and the fight that we have to do. You know, it's like we have to work it on all different angles, and that's why it's good when you know when we can connect with these organizations. And I'll do my best to reach out to them a lot more. And you know, for us to sit down and talk as far as ways we can get when when more and more people come into Ghana, especially a younger generation of people in their twenties and thirties, you know, mm -hmm. we want them to just you know connect to these organizations and understand that um, you know that it's important for us to have our union because the same thing you know you have the um, you have different people from India, you know, um, and uh, you know they have their their organization, they have their um, their their credit union, they have, you know, many different things. And the same thing as other nations that's uh, there in, uh, you know, Ghana, like the Lebanese, you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's the same situation. They have their stuff together. So, and, um, you know, our situation is definitely more, you know, different because, you know, we're, you know, we're, you know, we're stolen Africans where we, we connected, but at the same time too, we still have to do some of the similar things. Um, right. So, uh, you know, so it's one of the things where people like myself and other people, you know, we have to take the lead and just keep, you know, you know, keep, you know, Leading that generation, as we see people like Amicus and many other people that, you know, got there uh, 30, 40 years ago. I think she's a pioneer. Uh, go ahead. I said she's a pioneer. Oh yes, and they're, they're at the stage where they, you know, they they put their work in, and now it's time for you know, folks like uh, myself, yourself, and other people um, to you know to just carry the, you know the energy on, which you know we have done because I see you consistently, you know, you know, all, you know consistently making certain moves and doing research and 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 you know and just kind of you know pushing it to the the, ne the next level and also people that it's the same situation in order for us to change anything in Africa or for us to make any kind of difference we have to get in the game and you, know, you just showing up your Nigerian passport is 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 that one is that thing you know you got into the game and you know you made some changes and you made some move and then the impact was there and you know, a lot of us can make different impact in many different ways but uh you know you know, we, we, we really have to harness our uh, energy and do group projects, um, not, not just say, you know, because it's easy to say we need to work together and come together. But uh, group projects, like I mentioned, the Garvey Town is one of the main group projects. I was talking about 300-acre project. Uh, things like that, um, if we can pull that off and make it work, 
or when we pull it off and make it work. Uh, it would, you know, it would be one significant difference. Us uh, organizing ourselves at the highest level with the different organizations. Those are some of the things also that um, you know will make a different uh, impact. But if people keep on going there and they don't participate in some of these organizations, then you know it goes out. Uh, you know things don't go as smooth. So um, you know we just gotta keep on pushing. And everybody, here's my uh, and I'll tell the story behind it. Yeah, here's, okay. my, here's my Nigerian passport right here. I actually got it stamped a couple times already. You know. <laughs> I, but I just bought mine. You, I, you don't understand the freedom you have once you have this, especially in West Africa with the Ecuador. You can move around without visas and all That's kinds. What of I'm saying, but money. I just, you know, I hear what you're saying in regards to you don't need the government. You know, you don't need the paperwork. And you know, there was no visas. And I, I, I understand, but money. I understand how you rationalize it, but until you have this in your hand. And you show up to the uh, Nigeria Benin border. Okay, so let me tell you a story. So here's my here's my U.S. passport. All right. So when I first, so I took uh, I took a bus from Benin from Kotono to Lagos. Okay, so literally. So this is before I had my Nigerian passport. I had my U.S. passport. So I get to the border. They drag me off the not drag me literally, but they bring me off the bus. Start asking me all types of questions, you know, what am I doing and all this other stuff, even though I had a Nigerian visa already. So then they tell me, OK, you know, it's weird, but my, even though I had a Nigerian visa, I have one that doesn't expire to, I think, like another year to next year. They still told me that I had to, like, I guess it would. They gave me like a, another visa. I don't know. It's weird. And that would have expired on the 18th of this month. So I left Nigeria. On like the 15th or 16th so they pulled me out I had to go into the uh the the passport control office you know because i took the bus at the uh benin nigeria border and you know i was in there for like 10 15 minutes switch to this <laughs> I, I had to get off the bus you know they came basically when you get on the bus they collect all your pass everybody's passports so i i didn't have to get off the bus no nothing it, it, it's just, Bomani, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, this just makes life so easy. So then going from Togo or from Benin to Togo, like literally I just showed this, they let me pass right through, you know. Bomani, I, just, I would not say that it's not a different thing. I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. I'm, I'm definitely agreeing with you. Um, and I was just saying that uh, uh, those things are not, shouldn't stop us. Uh, definitely your, your goal is to, Put your energy together to get, uh, you know, to get us uh, that full status, uh, ECOA status, or you know, or get us, uh, you know, or you know, beyond the side, uh, you know, Ghanaian uh, citizenship. You know, but definitely, um, you know, as you know, as you explained beautifully, the difference because I, we have been there. I've been to um, where we, we passed through Togo and Benin, and the same situation. You got to collect the passports, and usually what happens is we have to, like, you know, have to like put a stack of tips together. <laughs> it, it's what it is. It's like I got business to do. I got good people through countries, and I got a time for the drama. So you know, it's it's what it is. You know, we've been there, done that already uh, since 2009. So in 2017, when we went through the countries, the same thing. But yeah, it's 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 a big difference because if we all had you know Ghanaian passports, we wouldn't have went through none of the drama. Uh, so definitely, you know, I understand your point, and we're definitely you know working on fighting for that. But. Uh, right now, myself is making sure we get there and get things in place. Uh, and uh, some of us are going to get those citizenships right away because they're only processing so much. But I would tell tell everybody else, don't let us stop you. Uh, and when you get there and you like my brother here, you know, it's, life is sweeter. <laughs> oh, don't understand. Like just and then my friend in Togo, I told him, you know, like I got my Nigerian passport. He was like, you, you're now a free man. My buddy. in you're Togo, free. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm a free man. I mean, it's just I, absolutely. I, man, congratulations, for I, real. <laughs> I just, you know, of course, don't let it stop you as far as relocating or repatriating. But yeah, which is, which is my man, point. You got it. You have to. I mean, this is important. You have to get. Uh, you can't go back, you can't can't go back. Understand where you're coming from as far as you don't need the government to, you know, tell you how it's. You don't need the government to dictate your. Africanity, 
But I'm just saying, brother, just everything we've been through, especially me and you, I hate, I know you don't like using the term, but we'll just say descendants of enslaved people. You know, I mean, this is, this, you know, goodness, like you, yeah, I mean, it's just, like I said, I feel like it's a free man now with, with having this, with having that. But, uh, all right, so the, the Pan African. Con- Pan Africanism connection to the 2019 year of return. Now, Bomani, what do you? I mean, you're you're more, you know, your boots on the ground. What 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 um, what's your understanding of the 2019 year of return? Oh yes, um, um, uh, it is a combination of some um, of many things. Number one, uh, absolutely, uh, you know, you're talking about um, uh, 400 years ago, the first uh, set of stolen Africans um, being brought to America itself, uh, North America. Uh, so that in itself, uh, you know, people like to celebrate anniversaries and things like that. But uh, you know, it's it's something. You know, sometimes uh, you know you, you want uh, these numbers to come up. Like 400 years is a significant uh, time frame. Uh, so it opened up a lot of different people that may have not necessarily went to Ghana or participated or been open to Ghana, and they went. So that opened up a world for them. Mm-hmm. And you know, once you get to the country. The good thing about it is, uh, you know, it depends on your connection. Uh, you can be open to where you're looking to want to live and do business in the country. So that's one of the biggest uh, significance of it. Uh, there were a list of a lot of different uh, ceremonies and celebrations and things like that. But the thing that people like myself are more interested in is, you know, is us getting access to land, getting access to open up business without um, these ridiculous quotas that the, the government quote from uh, the Ghana Investment Promotion Center. And what, they, what, what, what quotas? I'm sorry to cut you um, off. In order for you to start a business, uh, you'll get um, what is a single proprietorship or with a partnership, uh, you know, you're looking at uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, and it, not necessarily that you just have to have all this money just upfront, uh, you know, from equipment to certain things. And I'll basically, um, you know, you know, Ghana, just like in a lot more other countries, they want you to bring in big money if you're looking to do business. And that's why, you know, we're doing, you know, certain things in Garvey Town to where okay. we can, you know, we can kind of just build our business the way we need to build it without having to fall under certain rules. You know, we're looking to just build somewhat of our own entity. Uh, but those but uh, those are some of the things that throw people off. But uh, nevertheless, uh, any one of us can register or start you know, a business there in Ghana. You know, all we have to do is go to the right um Know, the right ministries and in this uh situation you know you go to the registration registration uh, uh general there um in uh, accra but uh, nevertheless um uh, as we continue to talk about the connection um as far as um uh, you know, repatriation and pan-africanism to the year of uh of return now so so ultimately the other part of it is return so yes people are returning to reconnect but also you know i look at repatriation which is that movement um, for people who want to actually reintegrate and reconnect and you know, dedicate their life to, you know, you know, to where you know we have a you know we have a fresh generation of uh, you know of new Africans, you know, because uh, the, the generation of us, uh, you, know, you know, once we get settled, uh, one or two generation, everybody be uh, new Africans are reintegrated into the society. So you know, it, it also opens up uh, that dialogue and that connection, uh, and then Pan Africanism itself. You know, um, you know, Ghana is one of that significant country. You know, that's always been looking to connect with other African nations and looking to connect with other parts of the African diaspora to return home, so we can you know connect as a people. So all of these things, you know, you know, you see the colors all around me. It, it's just all a, you know, it's all a wonderful connection. And you know, I like how Ghana use these promotions, you know, the Joseph Project and 2019 Year of Return, and to boost tourism and things like that. Um, but, but nevertheless, I, you know, it's you know, that's one aspect of it. Um, and, you know, you know, I would love for the, to see the government do more. Uh, but at the same time, too, like I talk about, uh, once we do more and step our game up and not just come there and be about tourism and mm-hmm. be about just kicking back, relaxing, enjoying a good life. And, and you know, just, you know, if, you know, the more we participate and the more we connect, the more we show certain things, the better the situation is. Like one of the best things that we as a people can do is to create more economic opportunities in Ghana. Right for our own brothers and sisters that repatriate, and definitely for more and more people there in Ghana, and that's what we plan on doing with this wonderful uh, Garvey Town project, as we look to connect um, our people to gain 
to acquire 300 plots here. And then, you know, I'm sure many of the people are going to be marrying Ghanaian and Nigerian women. And then the women for me are going to be marrying you know, Ghanaian and Nigerian uh, men and other uh, Africans. So it's, you know, it's, 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 it's one aspect and one part of just you know, us reconnecting and working our way back. And so there's many different ways to work. Like I use the tours that we have, uh, we do every, uh, used to be every May and November to now May and December as a way to get people reconnected back by going through a process of, uh, you know, even though the process we talk about, you know, which is the important thing, going through the paperwork and things like that. And then when you get to the country itself, you know, connecting people with many aspects of things, including the people who have returned, who have left the uh, African diaspora and, and called God in their home. You know, so all those, you know, it's that wonderful world that, you know, you know, that's all connected literally. And, um, you know, any aspect of it can be used to get people open. You know, I feel like it's a good thing. And, uh, you know, especially just talking on a positive note. Now, uh, let's go, go ahead and jump to Garvey Town. Like, what's, what's the, um, I guess, what's the objective of, of Garvey Town? And if you want to go ahead and give the background information and all that. Yes, absolutely. I'll just go right to the point on Garvey Town to give people a summary and uh, to let everyone know that anything that I talk about, our Africa tours and investments like our Garvey Town, all those are details are on our website at Africa for the Africans dot org. And once you get on our website, everything is on the main menu. Uh, so you just click on Garvey tour and you see wonderful information. I uh, just updated all of the legal uh, documents and a memorandum of uh, understanding. But the concept of Garvey town is, um, um, and you know, as, as, as I was looking at all the legal paperwork and the memorandum of understanding out of 300 acres that was signed, it was a lot of promises and a lot of things that was, um, you know, that was the deal that made the deal work. Uh, one of the main aspect of the, the deal was the fact that uh, those of us that's repatriating and looking to connect to Garvey Town will build all wonderful facilities and things will be shared. Like when you build the fire department, the, um, uh, all of the schools, and when you build a medical center, it's all those things are built for the community. And the community goes beyond Garvey Town. Uh, the district is called Gomoa. Um, so those those things are all in the, in the paperwork. But the ideal thing is to get 300 brothers and sisters to to reconnect and acquire land and also to invest in building business. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we have had is a lot of people that that are looking to get land and looking to get things going for themselves aren't exactly expert in going to buy some land in, in different parts of Ghana that uh, they you know and then just go build a house and and live in and just work out like that. And you know, so a lot of people tend to stay in Accra um, and uh, you know, popular cities like yeah. Somebody was, uh, I was talking to a brother um, the other day and he was saying he thinks that's a problem because he, he was saying that it would be smart for black Americans or just, you know, the diaspora as they go back to Ghana to venture out outside of Accra. Yes, absolutely, definitely. And, and most people are uh, going outside there, but the people who fail and end up having to leave, they end up just being in Accra and after a few years, they end up having to return. But ultimately, like going out to where we are, you know, which is an hour and a half from Accra to two hours, um, you know, you can literally just, the cost of everything is a, is a lot cheaper and then it's more, you know, it's more agriculture and it's more tropical. So you look in a situation where you can grow what you need. Um, and you now one of the main things I talk about with, with Garvey Town is, you know, is the issue of some people who have come to Ghana and try to get land and they have ran into these crooks some of them are, oh, man. Some of them are, are, are local Ghanaians and some of them are African-Americans that have repatriated like this guy that we went to uh, Ghana to visit in May 2018 uh, uh, before we started this work on Garvey Town. Because ever since I started going to Ghana, I'm also trying to find people who have land sites who we can trust because, you know, different people want to move different parts of the, the, the country. And All right. most of the people, for the most part, they're going to spread themselves out. Uh, but we always want to make sure that we have one or two uh, what we call a African diaspora community or people in a certain community that can vouch and get people land and work certain things out. So, you know, um, we're in Sina Baraku and uh, we just, you know, someone that came on a tour with me, I didn't think, you know, these pe this person would just turn into that person. But it's like once you get to Ghana, uh, some people have bad plans. So when you run out of money, they get desperate and then the desperation turned to ripping off. Africans on the diaspora that's looking to get there to do land and things like that. So this guy Kojo Osaji for uh, or AKA Ricky Band there in very mm -hmm. uh, not too far from where we are in Garvey Town. Uh, you know it's nice there, but it's like 
just because you know people you know just because you see a bus of people coming in we are looking fresh and everything you know we're actually leaving the country you know i don't mean you can just work us down but you know it's like one of those things where in order for you just to get a feel of how this thing work you know you have to just get into the game of connecting people networking people and after a while you'll find out who is who's about what and who is not uh so in order for us to just give full surety that we can get people successful land and get them to be a part of a community and everything we just had to work out ghana uh garvey town and then i had to just commit myself to doing the administration and getting things set up for people and back in their investment as far as their land and making sure that uh we have all of the right people in place like i mentioned to you know we uh, you know i'm connected with our good brother uh philip jow and our brother prempe and then i have a few wonderful people i've worked with for over a decade and you know so we're basically res resurrecting the mm -hmm. barbie time project because i can tell you right now i could co-sign for a brother pimpe that's that's my boy yeah absolutely uh and many people have um and that's why i tell people that uh don't get caught up into the stereotype that uh, every person in a foreign country is going to rip you off you have some wonderful people and that's the only way i've literally made it through uh, my tour guide uh Kwabna Baka, guy had my back in many cases and you know it's, it's 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 a rough business as far as us trying to get in place and do things because you know sometimes not everybody understand and understand who we are and some people are not clear on what we're trying to do uh so sometimes that comes conflict but after us going through these things we work ourselves out so we have worked it out to where we can literally help anyone out there in the african diaspora who want to repatriate to get land in Garvey Town, get um, land fossil invest in, they can work in different sectors uh, from agriculture, farmland, to the different parts of the civil, cultural, to, you know, and, and you know, also looking to get people to invest uh, in building the things that we need. Like, you know, manufacture is one of the main important things in us uh, doing nation building. We can't keep on ordering stuff for this important from China. And that's been the biggest problem that you see, you know. Oh, man, man, dude. <laughs> Okay, so I got a story about imported from China, but I'm I gotta I gotta first do my research on it before I go in. And while you're doing that, let me take a quick uh, thirty second, uh, real quick. Uh, just get some fresh. Just right back. Okay, go ahead, everyone. But everyone, thank you for joining. Make sure you hit that like button. We have two hundred and two people watching, only seventy four likes. Please hit that uh, that like button, please. The like button, baby. Yeah, yeah, T. Kelly. So, Sister Gina, uh, African superstar, <sighs> our sister, she uh, she came from the UK to uh, attempted to come to my uh, coronation, and what what happened? She was gonna she applied for visa on arrival, and she never got the approval, so she just risked it and came. <laughs> and they did not let her in the country. Wow, that is. Yeah, but the thing is, if the flight, the the flight that they deported her on, if it was maybe thirty or forty minutes later, uh, my brother Falajiki pretty much would have got her in because he started going up the chain of command and talking to the right people. So, but it was just timing. But yeah, wow. yeah, actually, Kelly, Kelly, I was I was hurt by that. I was hurt. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, like you, you're saying, uh, that's one of the the, the, the big issues, the, the legality with just having you know, these documents to get in and out of the country. Yeah, uh, to make it a little easier because they do give you about you know about you know three to five years on you know, most of your visas, um, multiple entry. But um, you know, going to Togo and Benin, you got to pay for that expensive visa for this you know, thirty, I think, uh, uh, three months. Excuse me. Uh, so. But uh, um, yeah, uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, all of this is the fight to to get there. Um. Mm. Hey, shout out to Gregory White. Shout out to that brother. Appreciate the uh, the super chat, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, Romani, what kind of what mistakes do you see Black Amer or the diaspora making when they go to Ghana? Because I just like you like you said, I hear just the the land scam, the scams when it comes to land them always getting robbed like for some reason they move to Accra, they always get their house broken into oh and wow are you hearing that a lot yes yeah um I've heard, i mean i've heard a few stories but i mean you, you sound just i literally have talked i talked to Oshie a few months ago and it's the same the same reaction i get from him uh, he mentioned a few people but um um uh, it's one of those things where um um and i'm not um not stereotypes and things like that but uh, i was born in jamaica and 
it's one of those things, it's just something about foreigners, you know, because I used to, when I was a child, I uh, left Jamaica when I was 11, I used to always hear about foreigners and things like that. And it's the same thing when I get to Ghana, people talk about foreigners. So literally, b b based on what community you move into, uh, people, you know, you always have one or two people, uh, which unfortunately they don't represent the whole country. Right. They're gonna, you know, and the same thing, you know, you know, where I'm at, um, you know, you just have to secure your home. Um, you know, because I heard the brother um, John from Native Born was saying that, you know, while him and his wife, he was, uh, you know, in, in their room, they creeping through the window and stuff like that. You know, mess with me, either got blasted or shot <laughs> or electrocuted. <laughs> but you got to secure your spot, and that's why I talk about places like Garvey Town and Benu Village because it's a community where we're gonna all watch each other's back. And I want to get to the point where I want to leave my door open and everything is all good. And the good thing about you know, Garvey Town and the, those communities that we have, you know, we have guys that's going to be patrolling the community, you know, security and just guys walking around in plain clothes. And, you know, and this, there's going to be a high level of security detail. And it's not that uh, we fear our local brothers and sisters. It's the fact that we understand, uh, you know, uh, you know, when people, you know, when things glitter, they think it's all gold and people come right. in, uh, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like you hear some people in the sports entertainment uh, or, you know, business talk about in the same neighborhood that they grew up where they kind of build certain things. They can't like live there because they know what time it is. And it is what it is. Uh, Why are you out uh, at work? They're out <laughs> working their way into your, your spot. So you either got to have your stuff secure or you got to move into a community where, you know, you and people see eye to eye. So those are the conflicts and the situations that we deal in life. You know, you know, you know we're, we're folks trying to come up and things like that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them people like, you know, I mean, you know, I came from nothing and, I'm not this. You know, I'm not letting people victimize me. You know, so we're gonna defend ourselves and protect ourselves, and that's why we believe in this community, and that's why we believe people should join these organizations, and people look out for each other and connect with other people that are local that's not into the same madness. Because in Ghana, one of the things that always impressed me is when local people find out somebody's a thief, they beat them down. <laughs> oh, really? That's how we. Do, that's how you know. And that's what I love about you know uh, Ghana. It just reminds me of some wonderful things about uh, you know how things were uh, in in Jamaica when you know things were you know a lot more cultural and organized. And that's what I want you know I want to, we want to get back to you know I want to get back to where you know because sometimes one of the issue is with law enforcement in certain countries. Um, and I tell people that I call the uh, once you leave America, it's like uh, you know it's you know, you're dealing with lawlessness. You know you can end up somewhere in South America and you're dealing some place where it's just you know, the police and don't have no power and the people on the street run things. And, you know, you, you put yourself in bad situations. So, you know, you know, folks literally got to just, uh, you know, bond together and just, you know, understand that uh, not everywhere is going to flow the way they want it to flow. And uh, just like you in Ghana, one part of Ghana is, you know, you know, you know different parts of Ghana are much different. Uh, so, you know, we just got to be able to just, you know, roll with people who have our back and be clear about the situation and let's use street smarts because a lot of times we get victimized because we do a lot of stupid stuff. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. And sometimes you know, un unfortunate things happen to good people. Now, but what, what, what mistakes do you commonly see people who just moved to uh, Ghana make and yeah. end up on the bus, ending up and end up on a plane returning back to America? Yeah. One of the biggest thing is um, you're there. So, you know, you're sparkly, you're shining, you're looking good, you're feeling good. You know, you're spending the money, you're doing that. Next thing you look up, you know, you know, spent all your money and then you don't put enough effective plan to where you have a wonderful business going on for yourself in different parts of the diaspora. And then, you you know, you're building your local business going. Uh, I mean, I've seen people just come and go from individuals to family. And most of them did reside around the, the, the popular parts of uh, Ghana. Because we, as soon as you leave Accra Airport, you have uh, Airport City. You have airport residential. You have near neighborhoods like Jurlu. Uh, mm -hmm. You have neighborhoods like you know Isagan, Very expensive places, similar to you know, you know for you know certain wonderful places around the Atlanta area. Uh, so, if you are making CDs, you know you're gonna you, you know you're gonna you're gonna run out of money. And you know and you know and, and I feel it for people. And us, you know, I understand people are upset and frustrated with the government here, Trump and. You know, and other things and frustration without a system of goals and things like that. But it doesn't give people an excuse to leave without uh, properly planning. And then when you don't properly plan, you end up having to go to American Embassy. And one thing about the American Embassy, and I'm sure they love doing this, they'll put you on one of the planes. Like Delta got flights around many parts of these countries. So that's one of their airlines that's based in America. So 
that's easy for them to work out and then they'll find a shelter for you to go to so that's why i tell people about garvey town because with garvey town if somebody say romani yo it is not what i thought and things not working can you guys uh connect with me at garvey town and we just say come on let's uh let's come get you and then connect you into a community and we just assist you um and people are gonna definitely one of the main reasons we're building garvey town because it's part of uh, what I call the repatriation village. Mm-hmm. People like myself being there with my crew at the office and we there just helping people out because a lot of people have great talents and skills mm-hmm. and we'd rather for them to be on a commune and using it and not just squandering and wasting their investment. Uh, you know, not saying that we're trying to hold you hostage on the property because it's not like that. Right. Uh, we want you to expand and do things, but we want you to also use the energy as a support system and we tell people, when you have big money, think about your brothers and sisters, invest that money in the things that we have going. Right. You'll have your return. So all of these things, you know, like I talk about, is just part of those protocols. And the reason why, you know, we try to just reach out to people and say, connect with some of these people that we have and make sure you reference people. Don't just give somebody $10,000, dollars 30000 just because they talk nice and sound nice. And, you know, um, one of the things about everything that people like myself deal with, there's a high level of accountability. Everybody that I put on the list of people that uh, that's part of our projects and things, you know, we're all connected together. And I tell people quick, I'm not letting any of you folks mess this up for our folks. So I will throw you under the bus. Uh-huh. People know, like I've done with what you will, what you will. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's and and it's and you know, and we all have to understand there's a level of accountability, you know, um, and we can't let people jeopardize the future of our children. Right. You know, and one of the biggest things, and I wish at that time I was, you know, I was a little more mature and advanced in the game uh, when I first started working with Fianca, or mm-hmm. else I'd have been more actively involved in making sure things run smooth. And you know, and you just, work with uh, Fianca. Yeah, I, 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 you can. It's something that will never get out of people my, like myself, man, because that's like a big part of your entire life. I spent a good part of my life working on that project and working on things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always try to put it in reference of um, mismanagement of just like, you know, most of our business that fall under is just us mismanaging it. And, you know, and understand sometimes the system have things to play in it, but ultimately we can't blame everything on the system. Uh, we have to just realize that the system is what it is. Uh, it's set up to, with obstacles and things like that. But at the same time too, you know, we have each other to where we can connect, focus and organize ourselves and just make things work. And that's how I, pr- I approach everything. I approach everything like like, they, like how I saw it when I was in the Navy, I just you know, plan, plot, strategize. You know, folks, every single game plan they draw up, executed. You know, if somebody needed to be executed or something needs to be done, countries taken over, bomb drop, this done, mission executed. And that's you know when you just have a certain, certain flow of people who are dedicated to keeping order and keeping things organized. Let me. So the uh, citizenship part. Now I don't know if you could speak on it, but I think you earlier mentioned something. But with, through Garvey Town, can you be fast tracked to get your citizenship? Like, well, how, how's that work? Yeah, Garvey Town. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna be, you know, representing as, uh, you know, as this uh, incredible entity. And um, with that, you know, you'd be able to have your lawyers and your representative push and make stronger move for you. Um, you know, like, you know, these are white folks that they lobbyists and things like that. Right. Simpler things, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where if you need to just, you know, send, you know, send someone a nice, you know, a nice sexy lady or something like that, or just do whatever strategy you need. <laughs> right. You can tell that. Uh, but yeah, you know, but nevertheless, whatever strategy you have to do to just um, to gain the upper hand, you know, we'll be able to do that, especially legally and, you know, using um, the, the skill base that we'll be able to develop and actually, being able to accomplish things uh, because when you know when you can come into a country like Ghana and get things done, you know the thing of it is your greatest support is going to always be the people, and, and that's what I've learned in life. As long as you you as long as you fight for the people, <laughs> the people got your back. And people like myself, I'm, I'm a man of uh, people. You know, you know, and in, even in this movement of repatriating and just having my office here open almost 24/7 to where anyone can call me about anything repatriation investments and us do nation building. Only thing I tell people is just don't change the subject too much because we'll get off the phone quick because we don't have the time for the drama here you know, um, and things like that. But, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you know, you want to be able to just be there for your brothers and sisters and you want to be able to just represent them to the fullest because, you know, growing up in a country with a terrible government uh, you know, in, in Jamaica and just 
understanding from there that all other governments, black governments are similar to that. Um, you know, we, you know, people like myself always believe in this, the Marcus Garvey philosophy of self-reliance that, you know, we govern ourselves and, and, and build our own entity, you know, to the point where Marcus Garvey built in you know, actually a, a UNI, a global black government. And that's one of the significant things when you, when you think outside the box, you can create and come up with things that other people are, can't come up with, or, or you come up with things that would change the game. Uh, so this Garvey Town project is, you know, and I tell people the best thing to do, you know, is watch. And for those who, you know, want to see us succeed, just get in the game and help us build the many things that they could contribute. And for those who want to sit on the sideline and hate or sit on the sideline and watch, you know, we're, you know, we're going to put on a wonderful show for you. You know, we understand how folks like to be entertained. <laughs> so, yeah, we're looking, you know, I'm daily recruiting people, you know, I've just recruited this wonderful architect. I'm just out there just recruiting people, talking to people and, and you know, letting people understand about this movement. And there's people that understand, and some people may say this is a cult, and some people understand that, you know, well, everything is a cult, you know, you call all kind of things cult. But nevertheless, you know, people have to do more organizing together and working on projects together. When we talk about working together, that's the aspect of working together that I see needs to be, you know, even if it's just three to five people. And sometimes that's enough, you know, uh, you know, you know, just like sometimes, you know, uh, you know, the, the military sent out, you know, about you know, three to five men out to, you know, to, you know, to do, you know, to do execution plan. You don't need everybody. You just need the focus group of people to get things done. And like, you know, and for me, execution is getting something done, not necessarily execution. Uh, real quick, so we keep hearing this common, um, but mind, I know we talked about this before. The whole idea that we should focus on building our land here in America because the ancestors, the blood they spilt are shed here in America so we can have a future here. Uh, and some people feel as if you're spitting on our ancestors by uprooting yourself from here and going to Africa. Like, What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yes, uh, my ancestors, uh, stolen Africans uh, brought to Jamaica, they would want us to not be in the Americas uh, as happy slave, getting up every day, going to the plantation, working and giving, uh, uh, giving you know, you know, giving the beneficiary of uh, you know of what I'm to our ancestors, um, empowering them in every single which way you know every single thing we do from the food we buy to the mortgage we pay to the bills we pay to this that it goes to empowering. You know, you know, empowering uh, this nation that owns certain things. So why not go somewhere where all your resources, labor, skills, and your energy will be put towards changing the game for your children to where we'll own our own enterprises, own our, you know, we'll become our own, you know, distributor of uh, electricity, internet, you know, we'll become more self-reliant and self-sufficient. I tell people that, you know, our folks have had, you know, a good 120 years uh, in America, uh, you know, since uh, the emergence of, you know, uh, you know, someone like Marcus Garvey and the energy of the boys and the NWACP and all different kind of uh, movement. And Black America has had the, the greatest beneficiary. You know, Black America got the best and the greatest minds on the African continent, from the Caribbean, from South America, mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, from, you know, different parts of Europe. And I still can't figure out what, you know, and it's like, all of those great minds, all those financial resources, and we can't pull off here together. Why stress fight anymore, you know, for a winless situation? You mm -hmm. know, when if you can't pull off at, at, at your best, you know, um, you know, so in this situation, you know, my goal is to get the best of us and say, hey, we have land in Africa, you know, we have a beautiful climate, we have wonderful energy, our ancestors, you know, fought you know, fought as best as they could. Um, and now we have the energy and the resources to actually return and form an incredible movement that will help a lot of our folks um, that things will go bad for in, um, in America. Um, you know, you know, you had this idiot that just shut down the government for five weeks for no reason other than try to keep people on their toes. And it pushed a lot of us back because some of us are in a position where if we miss two or three paydays were done, or as, excuse me, one or two paydays were done. You know, so imagine, you know, you know, five weeks or so, and the fool might do it again. Uh, so, you know, you're in a situation where you're powerless. You can't stop an idiot like that or, or whichever other idiot they put in there, whether it's 
you know, someone who looked just like me, as dark skin as me, but mm -hmm. just the same ideology. The, the issue is, you know, you're, you're at mercy to a system that you can't beat and a system that you can't overcome and a system that has you cornered by every single number. And sometimes you have to just be a warrior and said, and say, and people can call, call, say, we spin on ancestors and call us cowards or anything. Sometimes you just have to just look up and just be strategic. And that's what I say to the people that one of the, some of the things I learned uh, this, uh, in my early stage uh, military intelligence is the strategy and, and, and warfare. And, you know, you don't fight battles that you don't have chance of winning. You are stronger villain pan-Africanism on the African continent. And even though you have these corrected fools, uh, heads of states, when you build, when you build an energy and the people love you, because ultimately that's you know that's you know not saying you're trying to get into civil war, because that's not you know what we're looking to. When the people love you and the people push for certain things, you know that's how you get changes. Um, a lot of times we don't have, you know, we don't have you know we as a people, just the general people. I'm talking about Africans who have repatriated the Ghanaians, us the lo the local people. You know, we're not working hard enough to do things for ourselves. Every time I turn around. You know, and you know, in the same thing, I'm just used to this in my head since just being in Jamaica. The government, the government, the government. I'm like, the hell with the government. And you know, I'm I'm with you on the part you talk about the government and as far as the paperwork and certain things. And then in certain industries, you know, you're gonna depend on your government. So the best thing I always look at is to, you know, to politically or just organize yourself together as a people in you know, you know, on you know, on a, in a, in a certain common ground. To where we you, you know what you want. A lot of times the issue is that you know we're so spread out and unorganized on our approach to mm -hmm. people or to get anything. Uh, you know, so and that's what I talk about going back to you're building the energy of three to five groups. The people that I want to work with, I want to work with proactive people like myself. For people who are still doing you know videos in their, their their basement and reading books and and just philosophizing and debating. I don't want to deal with you. You know, we want to deal with practical application because some of us had to get to that level. Right as we talk about levels to this to where we can organize ourselves properly and make you know because again as i talk about the the energy of, of black america here but look at also the energy of ghana out of all of the, the countries in africa you have several thousand africans from the diaspora who have repatriated or continuously come in there and then you look at what we have accomplished we can't even build an african diaspora community mm -hmm. one of our brothers has fallen hard times and he needs support he can go there you know right. Yeah. Instead of having to come all the way back to America, yeah, absolutely. I've, I've seen some of our folks get, get broken, and you know, so we have to do better. And you know, and I feel like you know, with the 2019 year of return, it's ideal to put these things out there on the forefront and deal with it. And you know, the, the only thing that confused me about a year of return before it even turned the year of return, you had all these celebrity clowns that's all in Ghana. What, 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 so, what did, you, what did you think about that? And I thought it was like a photo op, <laughs> it was a photo op, but <laughs> like, what. You know, I have people coming out of the woodworks. You never, you know, who, you know, some from Ghana and some, you know, and you know, it's like they like. Let me just beat everybody back to the point. Let me definitely beat that guy named Bobani. You know, he's not coming until May. Right. <laughs> but it's like, it's like you know, you you always want when your your brothers and sisters get excited about something that we harness our resources and say, hey, let's work together and put you know, projects together. And I always use projects. Projects should be anything, community. Uh, it could be a uh, group investment. It could be, you know, import, export, uh, certain trades. It could be building certain industries. You know, it could be just um, uh, many things. But those are the things that, you know, we'd like to see more people get involved with. You know, you know Ghana is an incredible country. I mean, the women are beautiful. You can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You I can agree. marry. Yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible. You can get, you can just get lost in passion. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's so much to do. But it's it's like at the same time, too, you know, we need more and more people to just dedicate themselves to making certain changes and not just coming to the country. And it's going to the dungeons and crying about, about uh, what I'm to ancestors. Yeah, it's important to mourn and, and things like that, but it's also important to plan for the future and be more practical on your approach. Uh, so those are the things I talk about. And over the years, sometimes I've had different ways of approaching these things, but now I'm trying to talk more calm and organized on us just literally just looking at key ways mm -hmm. and just getting over the hump and not procrastinating. And I always tell different black organization and I stop playing, you know, stop playing the, the bankrupt or the broke game, you know, do things in your organization that generate that cash flow. That way, when you have speakers come in, you can invite them when you have, you're trying to do certain things. It's not a low budget affair. So I'm just speaking out to all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, There's 400 years of uh, stolen uh, African ancestors 
uh, being brought to uh, America, that, you know, um, that's a long time for us to still be in a certain condition we are. And, um, you know, I understand that we're all spread out differently, but the ones of us that are in this world, just like I'm in this world, you know, we got to just be better leaders and just you know, take the responsibility to lead forward. It's it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of work, just like Garvey Town. I literally committed to doing all of the administrative stuff and all that stuff for, for Garvey Town and just take on, took on a whole lot of responsibility. Uh, but at the same time too, I don't work for the plantation system, so I was able to commit to that. And a lot of times we can't commit to it because we have so much on our plate. So I'm always telling folks, you got to downsize, man. You got to, you know, get rid of all of the baggage and everything. And for everybody, for some of the guys out there playing Playboy, you might you might have to just settle down and and think about the future of your race. And you know, you know, so you know, it's just a reach out to our folks in general, you know, to step it up. Absolutely. Brother Bomani, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and close out. Everyone, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And um, Sister Lexi Lex, thank you for the uh, super chat. Uh, anything else you want to share in closing, Bomani, and also how everybody could reach you and learn more information on Garvey Town? Uh, yes, family. Uh, all of the information for our Africa for Africans tours uh, is on our website, uh, Africa for the Africans.org. And uh, right there, once you get on the website, you'll see Garvey Town. You click on it, and you'll see all of the information, literally 100% of the details. So once you look at the website and check out the details and you want to talk to me, just uh, email or call me, uh, all of the contact information is on the website. Uh, so we're set to go to Ghana in two months, uh, May. Uh, coming up, for those who are still interested, we still have space available right now. It is 27 of us, and then we are building the journey for December of uh, 2019 also. <coughs> <coughs> Bless you. Oh, cool. So what we have is on uh, November 2019 to South Africa. So all those wonderful information is there on our website. So um, just click on the links and read through it, and uh, let's connect. And for those who need me to send them any information directly, you can just uh, text your um, your name and your email address, first and last name and email address, and uh, what you're interested in, whether it's a tour or Garvey Town, to 404. 931-9429. Go ahead and repeat your number again too, brother. In fact, let me put it in the uh, chat room. Go ahead and... Uh... Yeah, for those who uh, need information, um, as far as the email sent uh, for Garvey Town or the tours to Ghana or South Africa, you can text your first and last name and email address to 404-931-9429. I right, got it, got it, got it. Well, brother Bamani, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Guys, make sure you go to search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Until next time, family. Peace. All right, take care, family. Thank you.